Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Corrine Rayson from The Crew Coach on your mental health. Today I'll be interviewing an ex-bosun, Katie, on her experience of gender harassment on board. Okay, so I have Katie with us. So Katie was a client of mine and she had six coaching sessions as she transitioned, was thinking of transitioning out of yachting and wanted to, wanted to prepare herself for that change. And the reason why we're connecting today is because Katie worked on deck and I would like to speak about gender harassment within the industry and because Katie isn't working in the industry anymore, she's now found herself an amazing job um, back home. I think this would be um, ideal for us to talk about it. So, Katie, can you tell us a bit about your position on board and how long you were working on deck and what the experience was like for you? Because when we were in touch, you had an injury and you were quite deflated at the time. Yeah, so I have, um, I've had five years on sailboats, um, with about three and a half of those being on super yachts, um, always on deck positions. Uh, I did have one position that was more of a mixed role with some interior work, um, but deck work has always been my, my choice. I like sailing and I work on boats because I like to sail. Um, I did leave yachting, uh, Ultimately, it's not the lifestyle for me, and with injuries that were sort of piling up, it was the time for me to get out of it, try something else, and move on with my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of being female and working on deck, I know there's a lot of pressure to perform um, because the work can be quite uh, physically taxing. So what were some of the things that you experienced, um, I think, more coming from, it can even be from junior deckhands to leadership positions. What would you describe the treatment? What was that like as being female? Um, I found it was a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I had some boats where my gender was never addressed. It was never really an issue. I was just there to do my job. Mm. And that was great. Mm. Uh, more commonly, uh, I would have someone on the boat who had a problem with me doing my job because of my gender. And whether that meant um, they didn't want to teach me a skill I might be lacking or um, they just uh, you know, didn't want anything to do with me. Uh, I had names called. Uh, I had people go behind my back to captains. I had all kinds of different issues um that boiled down to someone doesn't want me there mm -hmm. and that reason is primarily because i'm a girl and i don't belong on deck mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so how does that impact you as a person i mean it's certainly very very difficult to ever feel like part of the team and part of the crew when people are making an effort to exclude you mm. um especially on some of the bigger boats with more people in the deck crew um, I did run into issues where, you know, one sort of rotten egg would kind of ruin the experience as a whole, um, just because he's a boy and the other boys like him, they're more likely to side with him than side with me when it comes down to it. And I certainly never felt like it was an argument I wanted to have with that person. Mm -hmm. Um, usually the way I see it is that like my gender is a fundamental thing and it's not something I can argue. If, if that's what the problem is, there's nothing I can do about it whatsoever. So it's easier just to try and do my job, do it the best I can do, mm -hmm. be as helpful as I can to everyone on board, um, outside, inside, whatever people want, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, and just try and make people realize that I am actually a valuable asset to have on a boat. Yes. So for a lot of crew who are working on deck being female, um, and actually, even if you're in the interior and you're experiencing discrimination, um, it can be on various terms. Um, eventually, that gets to, it can bring you down, but it also beats up your sense of self-worth and you start questioning and you're like, am I really crap at my job? Or, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. And you start doubting your own skill set. 
and if you're someone that doesn't like confrontation, how would you address a dilemma like that? This is one I did really, really struggle with. Um, the number of votes I went to where I ran into a person who had a real problem with me did have me thinking that, well, because this keeps happening, it's probably not, you know, it's probably not these people just being grumpy with me being women. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I am a problem. Maybe I'm all the things they say I am. Maybe I'm not a good sailor. Maybe I'm not good at X, Y, Z. Maybe, maybe any of the things that they're saying could be true. Um, I usually ended up just trying to find, you know, try and make good friends on board. Uh, obviously, you know, the women on board, they certainly understand it. Um, even, you know, women inside have experienced duck hands being macho and cool. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm so much better than you. I do the real work on the boat. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's not a fair dynamic at all. So you're saying have a positive uh, social network on board is really, really important. And yeah, I, you've got to have someone. <laughs> just to talk to and like say, look, this is what I experienced today. Am I going mad? Like, is this is there something wrong with this, or is it just me? Just to get that affirmation, because it can have a severe impact on your mental health. Because if you're starting to have those negative thoughts about yourself, then naturally it's either going to make you feel depressed or um, quite down on yourself, or you may experience a bit of anxiety where you, when you have to do a job on deck, then you're like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to do this? What if I stuff up? What are they going to say about me? And then are they going to give me a hard time? So it can have a knock-on effect on your mental health if you're experiencing gender harassment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that sort of women run into more than men, um, this is just from my personal experience, is that uh, we cry more easily. Um, if I'm really upset, I'm probably going to cry. And if I'm really angry, I'm also going to cry. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want in like an emotionally charged situation, you know, if people are saying nasty things to me or, um, you know, if I'm furious at the way I'm being treated, mm -hmm. I'm going to start crying and then that's it. You know, you're off the table. You've got nothing of value to add anymore because you're just a crying girl. Um, yeah. And that is just horrific. Yeah. So it's interesting how females also respond to, I guess, negative situations. So it's almost like we have to hold it in and go, okay, like I can take this, I can take this. And it gets to a point where you like go, oh, they've just pressed this button because it's just li like the feelings are just piling up. So how would you manage something like that when you're getting your buttons pushed all the time? How do you self-regulate your emotions? The only way I really found to deal with it was just to walk away, just to know mm -hmm. sort of what my limit was and walk away, whether that's, you know, whether I need to come up with an excuse like, oh, I need to grab this I need to go to the bathroom or whether it's just walking out of that situation um which I have also done before said to the captain I'll be back and just walked yeah. off the boat yes um, you just boats are such a small environment there's nowhere to go there's nowhere to hide um especially if people are your cabin mates or you know if you're sharing a bathroom or something with them you just mm -hmm. can't get out of their hair Mm -mm. And I think it's like getting yourself or understanding the warning signs for you, whether it be physiological, if you can starting to feel yourself getting worked up and a bit tense or teary and go, okay, I need time out, like pull the eject or push the eject button and get out of there and give yourself some space to um, gather yourself and then um, be able to address the issue when you feel okay rather than being in an emotional heightened state so um in terms of being confrontational and saying look uh, what you said to me really bothered me and made me feel x y and z how do you think a female crew working on deck could go about speaking to say someone in a senior position that is male and maybe not as understanding of what the experience may be like for yourself. 
it's a hard one. I've had people who are receptive to it and I've had people who weren't. Um, but one thing I do wish is that I had advocated harder for myself in these situations, mm. um, even with people who were, you know, receptive to the complaints. I certainly always felt like, you know, this is a personal problem, not really a work problem. And, you know, I should be able to sort it out for myself when ultimately that's not the case. Like I should have gone to someone earlier. I should have said, hey, look, there's a dynamic problem and I'm struggling with this. And I really think this behavior is inappropriate. Is there something I can do? Or, you know, if not, I just want to make you aware of it because, mm -hmm. you know, it is a problem on board. And ultimately, once you have a dynamic problem, there's very little you can do to solve it if you let it get to that kind of point. Yes, yes, 100%. So for female crew who are applying for work on deck, in the interview process, what sort of questions would you ask, knowing what you know now? In terms of? In terms of seeing whether the role is a cultural fit for you. Wow. Um, I think it's kind of self-selecting once you get to an interview stage, um, I certainly felt like a lot of boats, if they were going to have a problem, sort of selected themselves out of it. I'm sure every girl who's worked on deck has received a huge stack of rejections saying, sorry, no women, sorry, no women. We don't do women on deck on this boat, which is fine because, you know, when it comes down to it, I don't want to work on a boat that doesn't want me to be there. Um, my last boat did an incredible thing where they actually took, uh, names and photographs off of resumes Amazing. so that um, for like the final crew members the sort of final selection um, and gave them out to the crew for everyone to look at so that everyone in the crew had a say in this mm. and what you were looking at was not oh hey this girl is really pretty I definitely want her on deck yeah or, you know yeah. something like that um, which made a huge difference uh, and was a bit of a shock for one of the crew members when I showed up on board um, mm. as the person he had chosen. Yes. By the way, sorry, you're getting a girl. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Um, like yeah, that. I wish I could see more of it. I think it does make a huge, you know, a huge difference to, to judge someone on skill set rather than a picture. But it also sounds like the crew need training on that themselves. So like unpacking belief systems around gender. The, the setup and the intention was really good, to be fair. However, by hearing what you've just said, it was still a shock to this person. And it's like, I'm just managing and, and, and helping him understand the dynamic and what his fears are or what his biases are, or, you know, you know what I mean? So there's, there's extra support required in order to make it work. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I do think you need some sort of network. And I think if you're going into something like that, where, you know, you know, at the beginning that there is a potential for a problem, mm -hmm. you know, I'd certainly like to know that the network, to talk to the captain or the network mm. to talk to someone that's sort of a bit more available mm. than I did at the time, um, mm. just based on some things I heard afterwards about things that were said to the rest of the crew and not to me. Mm. Um, you know, made it very clear from the beginning on his part that I was a problem, whereas I assumed that maybe he thought, you know, if I wasn't doing X, Y, Z right or you know, I didn't have a certain skill set and was a little behind and needed to catch up, whereas mm. really none of that was the problem. Mm, interesting. And I think that um, when you do go for an interview and you're applying for a job, it's always important to be open and honest. And so, for example, someone in your situation who's, well, previously, like when you were applying for a job on deck, the sort of questions I think I would ask would be, have you had a female working on deck before? What did that look like? Did you experience any issues? How do you feel about a female working on deck? If I had an issue, who do I go to for support? All those sort of questions are so, so important because that's going to give you an indication of what the culture is like on board. Yeah, I do agree with that. And I do think it's also to ask sort of, um, important to ask about the crew, like who the crew are, what their background is. Um, you know, is there sort of diversity in the crew? You know, do people come from different places? Um, do 
people are sort of different ages or is this sort of one set of people yeah. that might not be the best fit for um, mm. someone like me to come in and try and be like, hey, I want to be part of you. Yes, yes, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it makes complete sense. So in terms of now you transitioning out of the industry and before we we're looking at um, when we're doing coaching skill sets and how you can transfer the skills from your previous job on the yachts on into a land-based job, what would you say were the key skills um, working on yachts that helped you find a job on land? Like what could you suggest to crew working on deck? Like what sort of things could you focus on that would help you source um, a future position on land? I think the biggest thing um, is the soft skills, just the, you know, we work long, crazy hours, we get anything done, you know, whatever request comes at you, whenever it comes at you, you can make anything happen. Um, you know, people work, work really, really hard um, and they're very, very flexible. Um, and I think those are, probably the skills that landed me in the job I'm in saying, you know, I don't, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I don't know anything about the industry I'm in now, but I didn't know anything about sailing. I didn't know anything mm -hmm. about, you know, these courses I did. I didn't know anything about, mm -hmm. you know, getting my yacht master or, you know, learning astro navigation. They're mm -hmm. all things that are so far removed, but you can pick them up, you know, you're smart and, you know, switched mm -hmm. on and you can learn them and you can do the same with sort of any other industry you choose. It doesn't have to be related to boats. Yes. And I fully support you on that one because I think soft skills, aka emotional intelligence, is so critical and it really gets you places, but it's an investment. And the best part of it is that these skills can be learned. Uh, empathy is one of them. Self-awareness is another one. Compassion is another one. Um, so, yeah, in terms of soft skills, what do you think your top, I know this is a difficult question, but what would you say your top three soft skills would be just to help others have a realization of or some understanding of what soft skills look like? You said hardworking, uh, diligence. Um, I think a big one would actually be toughness. Um, the resilience. Not so much physically, but sort of a mental toughness, knowing that, you know, I've done so many things and I've been in, you know, the horrible situations, you know, we've all worked months and months without a break and then had, you know, something thrown at us that, you know, could break a lot of people, but no matter what the job gets done and you know that things aren't going to be that bad again. Um, and I certainly find that, you know, I hear people complaining about little blah, blah, blah things. And it's like, well, that doesn't really matter. Like mm -hmm. it's just a little annoyance. It's not bad. You know, I can think of so much worse it's fine. Yes. That's actually something that I've been reflecting on this week. And I think yachting puts a lot of pressure on you to be perfect. Like everything's got a place, everything needs to be right. And when it's not, you get so frustrated and you're hard on yourself for it. You just, you can have your little moment of like, ah, but let it go. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's the skill through life experience that you learn. But yeah, it's just understanding yourself and your reactions to things and what you need to change. Is it serving me? Is it not? Thank you for sharing and your contributions. And I'm so happy to hear that it's still going well for you. It's just, yeah, it's, I, don't know. I just feel super happy. and It's just really nice. I just like to look at my arms again. Every time I speak to you, my hair is <laughs> like on these bumps. So like, I can't believe it. <laughs> that like, like little things like settling down and meeting someone, like all of your goals. And it's how it's just happened. It wasn't even a struggle. It's just like every time we boom, 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 like just flowed. Exactly. I don't know. I decided I wanted it. And it was like, okay, you can have it. It's <laughs> like, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a little bit insane. Yeah, but enjoy all of it because it's so well deserved. Yeah. yeah thank you. I, I wouldn't be here if we hadn't had the coaching sessions. I would be doing God knows what. But yeah. Oh, thank you.